Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to our testimony Thursday night services. This is a night where we're coming together and we're hearing about the power of God and how God has been faithful to his people in the midst of this time. And so tonight we have a special service. We have a service of a miracle that took place, a near-death experience that God has done a miracle, and uh, you're going to be hearing from her, and then we have a, a couple that's also going to be testifying. So what we want you to do tonight, if you think you can think of somebody that needs to hear about the miracle working power of Jesus Christ, and they need a little hope in their life, we want you to go ahead and start a watch party, and we want you to invite as many people as possible to this Thursday night service. Why? Because God is still doing miracles. And if you're tuning in through YouTube, you can go ahead and share the link, and let's get as many people as we can to tune in to what God is doing right here in Victory Outreach Cape Town. And we know that God is going to use this service to do something supernatural in the lives of his people. So right there behind that device, I want you to close your eyes, and let's go ahead and dedicate this service in a word of prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for what you've been doing. We thank you for your life-changing power. We thank you for your resurrection power. Lord God, how you can bring dead things back to life. And Lord, tonight we're going to hear a testimony of somebody's life that you have totally resurrected. Lord God, and also a powerful couple on how you've also resurrected them from the dead, Lord God, and given them a brand new life. Tonight's a night. Use tonight's service to speak to somebody's life. In Jesus' name, and everybody together said amen, amen, and amen. Well, let's go ahead and get our praise on. God bless Bless you. Come on church, I really do praise God this evening. Come on, just lift up the name of Jesus this evening. Come on, I know Corona's not going to stop our praise tonight. Come on, get up of your seat and just put your hands together for the King of Kings. Come on, just one more time. Sing it out. 
time with God this evening. Father, we need your presence tonight. Because in your presence there is fullness, there is healing, there is deliverance. And tonight we just want to lift up your name.
That's it. Right there. In the, right there in your presence of your, your living room. I want you to lift up those hands. That's it. Close those eyes. And let the power of God come upon your life. up your hands right there for a few more moments. That's it. Close your eyes. This Thursday night, the middle of the week, right there we need the supernatural touch of God's powerful Holy Spirit to come upon our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight. I thank you for miracles. I thank you that, Lord, you are the God that is able to take a situation and turn it around for your honor and glory. A situation that looks hopeless. A situation looks like there's no way out. But Lord, at the right time and at the right place, you step right in and you're able to bring dead things back to life. You're able to do miracles and we know that you're able to do that same miracle right here, right now, tonight, in the name of Jesus. If you believe that is able to happen, I want you to worship him a little bit. If you believe that you serve a miracle working God, I want you, I want you just to close your eyes and, and lift up that hand and lift up that worship. If you believe in the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. Hey, he's a miracle worker. He's a life changer. He's a he's above and not Hallelujah! That's it. Invite the presence of God into that, into that situation. Invite the presence of God into that house. Lord, in the name of Jesus, go ahead and put those hands together if you believe that you serve a miracle worker, that you believe that you serve the one that can turn it around, the one who's done it in the past is the same one that can do it right now, and the same one that will do it in the future. If you believe that you serve a God that rose on the third day, one that didn't stay dead, one that came back alive, one that brought you back to life. Go ahead and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The miracle worker. That's who we serve. The one, I remember it was 21 years ago when Jesus brought me back to life. Now I wasn't physically dying, but I was dead in my transgression. Smoking drugs, running the streets, lost and confused. But at just the right time, and right in the right place, Jesus stepped in and brought this dead man back to life. If Jesus brought you back to life, go ahead and give me some emojis. Put a little something in that chat and give the Lord a good round of applause right there in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, this is Testimony Thursday. And this is a time where we hear the testimonies on our Third Wave Thursdays. We are identifying certain testimonies and how God is moving in the lives of of so many people during this pandemic. In the midst of crisis, God is still doing miracles, and we've heard testimony after testimony. And so what we're trying to do on these Thursday nights is get those testimonies, and we've heard them, but we also want to give you the opportunity to hear the testimonies of what God is doing in people's lives. In the midst of crisis, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. In the midst of this pandemic, God is still doing miracles. So I want to go ahead and call up a, a young lady. Hallelujah. 
who the Lord has done a tremendous, tremendous work inside of her life and a powerful testimony just recently that happened and she's going to be able to share with you tonight. Sister Sharifa is going to give a blast for Jesus. So go again right there in that chat. Go ahead and put some comments, put some, put some different things and she's going to be able to testify here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Chucky. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, I want to give God all the honor and all the glory that I can stand here. But tonight, I first want to greet and say thank you to our pastoral team, to Pastor Chucky and all our leadership for allowing me and for granting me this opportunity. Tonight, I want to greet each and every one of you, where you are in your lounge, wherever you might find yourself to be. I am grateful tonight. I want to share my testimony briefly with you to bring hope back because all of us have been affected by this COVID-19 virus. Whether you lost a loved one, whether you've lost relationships, whether you've lost jobs, I can relate tonight to even losing my job but I can also relate more importantly to almost losing my life and so I know this testimony will be a blessing to everyone, even our visitors tuning in tonight, I hope that you will be blessed by this life changing testimony, so it all started for me, one say about six weeks ago, when I found myself falling ill and I woke up one day beside my bed, not knowing if I passed out and I woke up drenched um, my whole gown was wet and I knew something was happening to me and so my daughters when they because we were on con continual contact with each other they realized that their mother must be very ill so my sister that's a professional a medical professional she came and one look at me she said we need to get you to a hospital and on my way to hospital you know like all of us the fear stories that we hear out there they were fearful of taking me to the hospital because they heard that the isolation facility and hospitals, you die when you go there if you have the COVID. And so we took a detour and I went to my sister's house instead because they felt that they were going to isolate me at my sister's place in a separate entrance. And there I found myself falling more ill and more ill. And you know what? I thank God even for my daughters today. My daughters that put in leave, left their husbands and children behind to come and look after their mother. You know what? They sacrificially and uh, you know, unselfishly they came and they looked after me. But you know what? God showed me. In that particular time I had a um, test done but I was still waiting for the results and I didn't know if I was positive. But as I became sicker and sicker in that week, the Lord clearly said to me, my child, you are positive. But you know what? Whoever is in your space, helping you, supporting you, they will not be infected and that's a promise I give you, my child. And the Lord said to me, the reason for the delay of the test was not for anything. He delayed it because He said, if I had to know before the time that I was positive, I would not have made it because the mind family is a powerful thing the things that we've heard what people say would have caused my death even then and you know as I got sick they took me to the hospital and when I came there apparently when they took my they took x-rays they took blood I looked like a draggy I had blue marks all over my arms and when they gave me the results that I had COVID pneumonia and that the, the prognosis didn't look too good and the doctor said to me that one lung collapsed and you know what as humans are I looked at the doctor and I said please tell me that I'm going to make it and this doctor looked at me and he said I cannot promise you that because people that come in here some make it and some don't and you know what with that they pushed me into high care and there I had my first ordeal when I, I went in there oxygen was given to me but my lungs couldn't absorb the oxygen and they were going to ventilate me and I just heard one day when, when I had no breath I promise you I had no breath and I heard I heard clearly God speaking to me and he says to me my child do not panic he says relax and he says to me this you shall live and you shall not die and he says to me breathe and all I could do was this and he says that's okay my child breathe and you know what as I was there in that situation I felt the praise of hundreds of all of you watching me sitting under the sound of my voice I felt your praise lifting me out of a dead situation I had this for three days in that IK ward I had another incident where the, the curtains was closed around me and I couldn't breathe and I needed to talk, call a nurse I didn't have the breath and I tell you I felt the supernatural power of God because of the power of intercession the power power of prayer and I thank God for a praying church. I thank God for intercessors that knows how to pray because they are effective. 
fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the doctors told me that I wasn't going to make it. But God took me out of that three days of high care. And they could eventually put me in another ward. And the doctors was actually very surprised. They said it will take me a year for my lungs to recover. I can tell you the fact that I can speak here without going ah, ah, or struggling for breath as a loving testimony. And I want to say to you, if God could do it for me, He can do it for each and every one of you. No matter what you trust in God for, trust Him is alive. He's a miracle working God. And I thank God tonight for giving me back my life. I do not take it lightly and I do not take His grace for granted. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Powerful, 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 powerful. Listen, this is what I want to do. You heard that testimony. I'm going to pray for you. There's some of you that are sick in body. There's some of you that have even been inflicted with coronavirus. And you've been watching this service. And I can feel the Holy Spirit. I can feel the Holy Spirit ministering right now. Close your eyes right there where you're at. And we're going to trust God for the miracle working power. The same power that showed up as a result of prayer to heal Sister Sharifa is the same power that's going to show up right there where you're at. Right now, close your eyes, lift up your hand. You have cancer, you have kidney disease, you have blood disease, you have you have diabetes, whatever disease that may be inflicting your body right now, we serve a miracle worker. We serve the one who rose on the third day, spoke his word, brought Lazarus back from the dead, healed the woman with the issue of blood. That's the God that we serve. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus. We believe in the miracle working power. We believe that the same power that touched the woman with the issue of blood, the Lord, you felt power leave your body. That power healed that woman. That same power showed up to that hospital room and begin to breathe air into the lungs of Sister Sharifa. There are those that are tuning in tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus. I pray for miracle upon miracle upon miracle. I pray for cancer to be removed. I pray for blood disease to be healed. I pray for coronavirus to be healed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's do it, hallelujah. Lift up your hands and receive your miracle. Come on, sing that song. Hey, that's it, come on. Impossible. That's it, that's it, that's it. What's impossible with man is impossible. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Miracle worker, life changer. That's it in the name of Jesus. Hey! That's it. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles that you've done tonight. Thank you for the cancer that's been healed. Thank you for the coronavirus that's been totally removed from people's bodies. Thank you that you've healed blood disease, kidneys, liver problems, miracle worker. You get glory when times are the darkest. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, if you got that miracle tonight, you got to believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Powerful. What a testimony. We need to give her a little more time next time. Hallelujah. But you could really feel the anointing as she was sharing. And I remember the, the, the doctors actually calling my wife and I. They called and they said, it, it doesn't look good for Sister Sharifa Jansen. I didn't even know her name. Last name was Jansen. Come on, somebody. I said, Sharifa who? Hallelujah. They said Jansen. I said, Jansen sounds too American <laughs> to be here in South Africa. And Chica says, who? Sharifa Jansen? Oh, my God, that's Sharifa. And we began to pray. And we sent it out. And throughout the entire country, Victory Outreach began to pray. And from one day to the next, 
You heard it tonight with your own ears. God is a miracle worker. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, at this time, we still have a whole service that we got to get into. So I just want to shoot through these prelims real fast. We're going to hear another couple that they're going to testify as well. But we also want to give you an opportunity to be faithful with your finances. So if you could go ahead and get a hold of your phone. We're going to go ahead and put that barcode there on the bottom of the screen. And uh, you can pay your tithes, give your offerings tonight. How many know we are faithful in our finances? And I know that there's a lot going on in our world today. But the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he says, do not worry. I know there's a lot going on. There's a lot of worry going on. But God strictly instructs us not to worry. I've even heard it say that worry is a sin. Come on, somebody. Worry is a sin. Why? Because you are downsizing the God that you serve. And the Bible says in Matthew 6 verse 30, if, if that is how, uh, I'm sorry, 31, he says, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans, in other words, the unbelievers, run after all these things. And your heavenly father, he's a good, good father. Come on, somebody. Your heavenly father knows that you need him. Here's the key, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things that you are worried about, all these things that are taking the attention of your mind and even messing with your heart, causing anxiety in your life, all the things that you don't have but you wish you did will be brought to you. When you keep God first, what are you saying? God, I trust you. When you keep God first in your finances, you're saying, God, I trust you. I don't live in the economy of South Africa. I don't live in the economy of the world. I live in the economy of the kingdom. God, you are in control of all things, and my life is is in your hands. I trust you, and I'm declaring my trust by being faithful with my tithe and faithful with my offering. So we want to encourage you to continue to stay faithful with your finances, position yourself in the economy of God, and watch God continually blow your mind. Go ahead and lift up your, your gift tonight, your phone, however you're paying your tithe through the banking app or your offering. You can go ahead and believe that God is going to meet your needs. And also those of you that are holding on to cash, you can come in every Monday, Wednesday, or Friday from 12 to 2. And we are receiving finances also here at the church. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people. And we pray your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I want to make a few announcements here tonight and uh, so we can have some time to listen to these, this couple, this powerful couple that God has truly done a miracle in their life. And they're also going to be sharing a word of testimony. If you need somebody that needs to be reached, that needs to hear of people that have been in a dark place or even in now in a dark place, make sure you start a watch party right now. And uh, we're going to have a powerful testimony from one of the couples in our church here in Victor Outreach, Cape Town. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and make mention of a few things that are happening in our church. On Monday, August 24th, we will be having a women and gang girl discipleship with none other than Sister Mitzi Morales will be with us. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. That will be on a Monday night, 7 o'clock, August 24th. And then on August 23rd, that will be a Sunday night. We're going to have the men and the gang warriors coming together, and it's going to be via Zoom. It's going to be happening on a Monday night at 5 o'clock. Don't miss out. It's going to be a tremendous, tremendous time in the Lord. So the women on the Monday and the men on the Sunday, August 23rd and 24th. And then also we have a very special service that's coming up on August 30th. We have our Victory Home Graduation Service. Wow, what a service it's going to be. Men and women's lives that have been totally transformed 
transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. They're going to be graduating. Some of them never graduated school, never graduated from other things. But how many know God has got a second chances? Hallelujah. And God has given them a second chance. And if you've never been a part of one of our Victory Home services, you do not want to miss out. August 30th, it'll be a Sunday morning, and we're going to be celebrating the graduates of our Victory Home class of 2020. Come on, somebody. And we're going to have a great time. Again, that's August 30th at 9 o'clock via YouTube or also Facebook. And then on August 31st, we're going to be having Elder Pastor Sonny Argonzoni Jr. will be in the house via Zoom. Hallelujah. He'll be in the Zoom Zoom room. Come on, somebody. We're going to have a great, great time with that. And uh, last month, we had Elder Pastor Al Valdez. This month, we will be having Elder Pastor Arkansas, Sonny, Pastor Sonny Jr., and he'll be with us, and we're going to have a great, great time with that. How many want to stay sharp in their leadership? Don't get lazy in this time. Stay sharp in your leadership. Make sure you plug into that. And then, obviously, every Sunday, we have our 9 o'clock service. Don't miss out. And then one more announcement, baby dedications. You have had a baby. Hallelujah. You've had a baby uh, during this time. Your baby's been born. We want to continue to... Uh, honor that and be able to dedicate our children unto the Lord. And so we need you to reach out to us through our, our website, fill out the form. We'll be in contact with you and we're going to put a date together to be able to dedicate our babies. How many can say praise the Lord? Amen. How many are excited for Run for Hope? Come on somebody. How many believe Run for Hope is right around the corner? And also, I want to make mention that we also having our women's convention that will be taking place, Victory Outreach International Women's Convention will be taking place in the month of September. And so all the women, we want you to get ready for that. Make preparation. It'll be one whole week of Women's Convention. We just came out of our third wave conference for the gang. And now it's the women's turn. It'll be taking place in the month of September. How many can say praise the Lord? Amen. Well, go ahead and look at that device. And we're going to go ahead and show you a video announcement. God bless you. October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose, a united we can effort, Run for Hope, in 12 different locations. Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of Unstoppable Help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. Praise the Lord. Once again, we are in run for hope mode. Don't miss out on being a part of this. And uh, by faith, the lions are still winning. Hallelujah. And we are on top. But again, tonight has been a special night. We heard the testimony of Sister Sharifa and how God really, really did a miracle for her physically in her physical body. But we're also now at this time going to hear another powerful miracle of how God has really done something great inside of a couple, a couple that I've been able to watch with my very own eyes, that God has brought them a mighty, mighty long way. And uh, I'm sure there's many of you that are out there that know them, know where they come from, know the lifestyle that they were living, and you know that it was a true miracle of God that they are here tonight. So without any further ado, hallelujah, I am going to introduce um, Brother Lionel, it's okay to let Michelle go first. Yeah, all right, brother, it's fine. Hallelujah. I'm going to let the woman of God go first. And uh, we're so proud of you, Michelle. We are so proud of you. God has really brought you a mighty, mighty long way. And so those of you that are tuning in, pay attention. It's going to be an awesome time. Sister Michelle is going to go ahead and go first. Go ahead and get some, give some, give, give, give the Lord a good praise. Praise the Lord. And uh, she's going to have a great time tonight. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a privilege for me to be here to the, this evening. And you know what? I've got a word for you out there. And as you are out there listening to me, you know, I am just thank God, you know, for my pastoral team, for giving me this opportunity, for being here tonight. I thank you for Sister Grace, that's my disciple, that disciples me. You know, I thank you for God for putting women and the pastoral team along our side to make us grow in this time. You know, it's not easy, but I've got a word to tell you this morning that, you know, I thank God for my salvation you know, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. 
I thank God today that you know what? Although my child was growing up in a childhood, and if there is a mother out there, if there is a father out there, if there is a son out there, if there is a daughter out there, please, I want you to listen to this testimony to, tonight. You know what? I come out of a family that was the perfect family. You know, my dad worked, my mom. I thank God my father was a gambler and always allowed men to come into the house. And you know, through all of this, my own mom didn't even know that I was abused. Not only once, several times. But you know what? As I grew up in this time, I had the privilege of going to Sunday school. I loved God so much, you know. But then there was a time my mom was abused by my dad. He used to beat her up. And that caused hatred in my heart. I hated him to a stage where I couldn't stand him. And you know what I did? I did all the wrong things. I went into lesbianism. I went into all kinds. I went even into Rastafarian. I tried every drug, but you know what? By then my mother got saved. And my mother never stopped praying for me. She prayed for me. You know, I've got two daughters. We are seven children, myself and Lionel. Children together, we are seven. I have seven kids together. And I thank God, you know, my mother raised my daughters at the age of 21, I was 20 years old. I got sent onto a train with a man I didn't even know. My mom put me on the train. I went all the way to Durban. There I got married to an Indian man. This Indian man ended up giving me his STD. I thought it was love. He said, you know, you don't say anything. You don't even speak about it. I couldn't tell anybody about it. I didn't know. The doctor said, you know what? You just need to use this medication. But then the abuse kept on going. He had so many affairs. And I ran away. And I came from Durban and I came back to Cape Town again. You know what? I ended coming back. But when I was in Durban, that is when I served God again. I served God. But when I left Durban, I started hating. I went back into my, back into my lesbianism stages. And that is where I went seven times worse as what I've ever been. Seven times worse for 15 years of my life. I was messed up. I was messed up to a stage where I had affairs with married women. But I'm there to tell you that you might have a daughter there. You might have a son there that is into gangsterism. You might have a daughter there that's into lesbianism. But you know, love them. Pray for them. Trust God for their lives. But you know what? I thank God. You know, if it, has, if it wasn't for Jesus being in my life, I met a man, Lionel Davids. I got divorced from my husband. I ended up taking an overdose. I found myself in hospital. You know, when they pump you, when they take the charcoal, and they give it to you. You know what? I, even, they even gave me that too. I wanted to take my life. Because I had to choose. I had to choose. But you know what? God. 
You know, God is faithful. In John 16, verse 33, it says, you will have many trials. You will have many problems in this world. But he didn't tell you what kind of problems you will have. He didn't tell you. But you know what? Through all the trials, through all the tribulations, through all the, whatever you are going through in this time, events of lockdown, I'm here to tell you that you know what? You need to stay. And on the word of God, you need to trust him with all that you have. You know what? I got married to a man, Lionel, and he came out of prison. He came out of prison, and I just gave up everything. I gave up my, 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 my gay life. I gave up everything. And I fell in love with Lionel, which was, when I was at the age of 16 years old, I met Lionel. And Lionel went and got married to somebody else. And that also broke my heart. But you know what? After 15 years, Lionel came out of prison. And I thought to myself, no, I can't go with this man because it is butch. Oh, you know, I've got brown tackies. I've got the shoes. I'm dressed with a guy. I didn't have hair like this. You know, I thank God. And, 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 and he still came in there by the hairdresser. And I looked at him and they asked me, Michelle, who is this person? And I said, it's a friend. You know, it's, a, it's a, my brothers because he was on the Navy and they were all friends together. I found myself much later, we got married. I had two sons from Lionel. I took his other son in with me, Brandon. You know, Brandon is running on the streets, but I'm trusting God for Brandon's life. You know, I'm trusting God in this time for Lionel's other son that's in prison. I'm trusting God for Gresham that's in Ocean View. You know, I'm trusting God with everything that we, we have, you know, now I know the two of us, we pray together. We can stand together. We don't have it all together. We don't have it all together. You know, I'm just being real at there, family. I'm just being real. Because it says you'll have trials. But you know what? I thank God. I really thank God today for a mission, for a, for a, for a, Church called Victory Outreach. We found ourselves in Victory Outreach. This is where we got discipled. This is where God started raising us up. This is where God started shaping us. This is where our children started coming into the ministry. This is where Liam and Dakota, since the age of five years old, when Brandon was still in the recovery home, I used to send my child, my, both of them, I used to pack their bags and they used to go to the... Victory home and go spend time there and that today Dakota which ran reckless on the streets of Mitchell's Plain you know he ended up joining gang and I thank God today that today Dakota is in the home in Johannesburg you know he's been disciple there God is busy with him Liam has been discipled by Pastor Henry praise God Myself and Lionel, we're in the recovery home. I'm being discipled and I thank God for the women and the men that I'm working with at the recovery home. And I give God all the glory and I give God all the honor. And I want to tell you women, men, young people out there that God has got a plan with your lives. You know, you don't have to go through this, through this time not knowing how to just forgive Forgiveness plays an important role in your life. Forgive and you'll see what God can do. Whether your husband did what to you. And I thank God today that, you know, I praise God and I give you all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chucky. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on and give Jesus a good round of applause. Praise the Lord. The Bible says what is impossible with man is possible with God, and I'm sure that the family, when they seen 
the life that Michelle was living and the, the path that she was taking, they felt like this is an impossible case. But when Jesus steps in, come on, somebody, when Jesus steps in, he's able to turn things around, not only in her life, but also in the life of her husband. And uh, I've been with Lionel for a little while now, hallelujah, and I've seen him when he goes into certain circles. I seen him one time in the, in, with some heavy, with the lanis, with all the little manscapas, come on, somebody, and Lionel steps on the scene. The people have respect. So I don't know exactly everything he did. Come on, somebody. But he must have done something to earn that type of respect. But again, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Here he is tonight, transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Brother Lionel, why don't you share with the people how God has done a miracle? Thank you, Pastor Jackie. Good evening, everybody. I greet you all and everybody in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. The name that saved me, the name that changed my life, I just want to say is that I have been an abandoned child from small already. I've been a young man. I mean, I've, I mean, I've been the, at the age of Pastor George's child, Jesse. I was abandoned by my parents. I was always put into different boarding schools. I've always been running around. You know, I've been an, a naughty kid. And you know... For the life that I lived, I always tried to win the love of other people, always trying to prioritize, trying to always get somebody just to take notice of me. And this is the way I lived, you know. And, and you know, there was even times as a young child like Jesse, I ran away from a then coming school. They put me in the home so far away from Cape Town that I even traveled from coming school to Cape Town, a young boy on a sheep truck. I came back home. My mother and father got the shock when I was knocking on the door, just asking to come back home. But it only lasted about a couple of minutes, and then they sent me back again. And this is the life I used to live, you know, and it was a horrible life because never, never ever did anybody uh, have the time for me. You know, I had to always fight and grab for everything. I ended up being in the Navy. I went through my schooling years. I ended up being in the Navy. I never really didn't have a father because the father that I had was my stepfather who didn't want me. But you know, for me, I didn't bother about that because I wanted to live the life as a survivor. I had to survive all the time, you know, and, and living that kind of life, you know, trying to, to battle with things, trying to, trying to always be in the love of people. I, I never had what many families had. They got this family love, you know, where you grew up as a family. But, you know, I thank God, no matter what I went through, I believe that, you know, that time already, Jesus did have his hand on me. God had his hand on my life. Because there was many times, you know, I, 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 I did things that could have ended my life. I was caught doing wrong things. People wanted to kill me that time already. And, you know, and as I grew up, I joined the Navy. And in the Navy, in the government, I was taught to do certain things, you know, which wasn't nice. And I ended up doing border duty. And on the border, during the party years, I was taught to do things that was not called for. But I still did it because I had to obey orders. And then through my orders that I did, they taught me how to do it. I did what I did, and I ended up in prison doing something not for the government. I ended up in prison, and my life came to a halt. But that, was, that is a total different other story because I ended up with a death sentence. And, you know, being up there in Pretoria and waiting for your time for the 52 steps, that was the last five, uh, the, 50, uh, the 52 steps that you take before they put the rope around your neck. I heard how people's necks broke. I heard how the gallows swung open. I saw the bodies laying on the scaffolding. I wish to remove the bodies. I wish to go and wash the bodies. You know, all these things I, I saw because I knew my time was going to come. But you know, you are so caught up in the moment that it doesn't bother. If it must come, it must come. That is how I lived. If it must come, then it must come. But you know, I thank God 
There's a scripture that says Ephesians 5, 8, walk as a child in the light. You know, and I started realizing that we find more value in the light after we move through the darkness. And I, you know, I, have did, I did so many horrible things climbing the ladder of my crime life that there's many things that Michelle doesn't even know of, you know, and I'm glad that I had to meet up with the families, you know, and reconcile with them and seek their forgiveness. They have forgiven me for the things that I've done. But then I even became a Muslim. I lived as a Muslim and my life changed only when I came out of prison when I started accepting the Lord because Michelle, when I met Michelle, she started going to church and I started going with her. For me to change from the number I became, it was difficult because nobody wanted me to leave. Not actually, the, the law of the number says you can't leave. And if you want to leave the, the number, they either put you down and there's it, or you go back to prison. But you know, when I discovered that God loves me more, I knew that I was on a path that there was no return because it says in scripture that the love of God covers everything, covers everything. All the wrongs I did in the past was gone. Nothing, I, I believe that no matter what people say to me today, I don't try and find out how people prioritize me on their list. I don't care about that anymore. All I know is I am now in Victory Outreach. In Victory Outreach, I find that I am now being taught how to move, how to operate, how to, how to be, a, how to be a, a leader, how to, be, how to help others who are broken. You know, because I myself, I've been, to, I've been totally broken. There's many times that, you know, Michelle, how many times she had to leave me because of the person I was, the, I, I'm, I'm, I, I was, you know, I, I, I was a bad person and there was times that, 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 that Michelle, you know, used to go and sleep at night crying because of the person I was. But I thank God, you know, he came and he changed my life. He made things happen in my life. I now can walk proudly. I can walk next to pastors. I can stand and, you know, and, 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 and just be an, a tool. And every time I ask God, God, just use me no matter what. And today, I don't care if people say anything about me or whatever they want to do. I, I'm, I'm not worried about it anymore. What I know is that here I am, I work now as campus here at the church, and I'm always, always in the presence of God. I'm doing things now for God, and nothing holds me back. So no matter what, I know people came to hear something outrageous in my life, but all I can say is that I pray every day that the gangsters out there, not mainly the gangsters, but the gang leaders, the moment they open their mouths to Sabella to say, to talk the language that they talk, Talk, I ask God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, change the Sabella into the, into the word of yours, Father God. Change it into the love, Father God, so that one day when the gang leader gives an order, you think twice and say, what did I just say? Did I tell that brother to go and get the Bible instead of a gun? So, you know, so I, I, that is my prayer always. So if you, if you think that God can't change your life, don't, don't be mistaken because God has changed me from somewhere dirty, somewhere bad. Because this is a song that always, when it, when it comes to my mind, and you know, when this song always plays, always I get a lump in my throat, you know, and by a deep halayme, God took me out of the deepest dirt. I, I, I fully believe that not so many people have has done so many bad crimes the way I've done. I've I, I, I bet you there's not so many people that have put away so many people under the ground the way I've done. Not just because out of pleasure, but because of what I had to do. And you know what? The best part of it is God has forgiven me. God says that I forgive you 
all your sins as far as the east is from the west. And I walk in that every day. And I don't care who says what my main mission today is to tell the next person. I need to pray. I need to read my Bible. And I need to tell the next person of the love of Jesus Christ. Because I believe no matter where my children are also, no matter where the broken person is, the gangster, no matter what you're doing, the number, no matter where you are. I believe God will touch your life. The Holy Spirit will change you, arrest you. I pray each day for Brandon. Where we Brandon is running around. I'm not angry at him. I was a father before, you know, I was a father before today. You know, before my, if I had to still be staying in the house I was, I was staying. If I had to still be staying there, I would have lost both my young boys today. But you know what? God moved me from a, my big house into a stable. And I believe in a stable the miracle happened because Jesus was born in a stable. You know, and the way I'm staying at the moment now, where I'm staying at the moment now, Jesus has changed Dakota's life. Dakota is a leader in Johannesburg. Liam is running into the discipleship home with Pastor Heinrich. You know, I have no problem anymore thinking where they are. I know my, my child can uh, quote scriptures Things they never used to do. And I see these things happening. The only thing that, the biggest problem that I have now is myself. I got the biggest battle within me. But I believe that Jesus is working with me. Jesus is changing my life. I believe and I know and I trust that God is going to make things happen. The blessing is out there and I believe it and I know and I trust God for everything that is going to happen. I believe that my wife and I are going to move to different nations. We are going to move into different people. We are going to meet up. We are, we are praying that we are going to be the mothers and fa the mother and father to many. And we believe that they are out there into this dying world. We believe. So if you are watching, I ask you in the name of Jesus, as a young father or any young gangster, just remember one thing. The healing power of Jesus Christ is not just to heal you of your sickness, but also to heal you of your past. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, this is what I do. Maybe Sister Michelle can come up and Lionel, you guys could stay up here with me. And um, powerful, 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 powerful of what God can do in the lives of people. And we've seen this happen year after year, uh, country after country, city after city, as the Ministry of Victory Outreach for only over 54 years, we have seen Jesus Christ changing lives like this beautiful couple. Maybe come right here. Thank you, Jesus. Come a little over here. There you go. You're looking good. Hallelujah. Didn't they look handsome? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, If any man or woman be in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone. I said, the old is gone. I said, the old is gone. Come on, somebody. And the new has come. There's a new creation. And I believe that the same way God, after Sharifa's testimony, we prayed for healing in the body. After listening to this testimony, I believe there's people that are tuning in that want to give their life to Jesus. You're tired of living the life that you're living. And you're saying, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of living the life that I'm living. I'm tired. The musicians, you guys can make your way. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna believe God for miracles tonight. We believe God has already done some physical miracles. But now the greatest miracle is the miracle of a salvation of a soul. When God gets a hold of a person's life and does a miracle in their life, there is no greater miracle. And so what I want you to do if you're in that house, I want you to start praying a little bit. If you're tuning in with us, I want you to start praying with us because we're going to believe God for a miracle tonight. The miracle of salvation. So listen, you're watching tonight. You're tuning in. You're saying, you know what? That's me. I'm lost. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried to make it. Maybe you're a gangster. Maybe you're tuning in. Maybe you knew that tonight, Lionel and Michelle were going to be testifying, and you tuned in. 
You said, I want to hear what they have to say. And you see with your own eyes, some of you know Lionel and Michelle from before. And you know that it was only God that was able to do what he's done. And in your heart right now, you can feel that if God can do it for them, God can do it for me. And I want to give you that opportunity that somebody gave to Lionel, somebody gave to Michelle, somebody gave to me. 21 years ago, I was also in the streets and running around madness with a family that was being destroyed by the work of the enemy. But then the power of Jesus Christ came into our lives. And if Jesus can change us, then Jesus can change you. You say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to go ahead and close your eyes right there where you're at. And I want to, I want to lead you to the Lord tonight. I want to give you an opportunity to be able to do that. But before that, maybe we could sing a little worship song. Can we sing a little song? Come on. I say worship him a little bit. That's it. He'll never give up on you. Go ahead, sing it one more time. and that's you. You can hear my voice. I want to give you an opportunity that somebody gave to us. An opportunity to invite Jesus into our lives. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you used to serve the Lord and somehow, some way, you fell far from God. Don't give up. God will never give up on you. The Bible says there's no height, no depth, no demon, no angel, nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So whether you're giving your life to the Lord for the first time or you find yourself in a backslidden condition, Jesus is here to save you tonight. Right there in that house, right there behind that device, close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for never giving up on me. I've heard the testimonies of how you are able to transform a life. And if you can do that for them, I believe you can do that for me. So I ask you, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart and save my soul. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of the life that I've been living. Come into my heart and change my life. I believe you died, shed your blood, for the salvation of my soul but I also believe that you rose from the dead and the same way you rose from the dead you can bring me back from the sin of my transgression save my soul in Jesus name in Jesus name that's it in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah one more time go ahead and sing it there you go. That's it. That's it. Falling in love. Falling in love. Come on, somebody sing in his arms. Yeah. 
listen, Lionel, Michelle, I know we're recording this, and I always want you to have this. God has placed a calling on your guys' lives. He's placed a special call, and I know that the Lord worked it out for us to have a conversation, and God hasn't forgotten about that conversation. Even though sometimes it may feel that you're far from that conversation becoming a reality, God's hand is upon your life. He's taking you through the process that's necessary. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Help me pray for this couple. God has a future for their life. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the vision, God. Thank you for the vision of Victory Outreach International. God, a vision that gives people like us a chance. God, a people that were so broken and so lost, but you've built a ministry to create opportunity for people like us. And God, this couple right here in the name of Jesus, God has placed a calling upon their life. And God, we have the privilege of being able to watch that calling come to pass. God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus for a new anointing. I ask for a whole new season, a whole new chapter. Father, for them as a couple, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, God, there's a fresh anointing that's come upon them. There's a fresh separating that you're doing within them. God, you're working out the things that need to be worked out on a personal level so that you could raise them up to a public level. And God, in that public level, gangsters will be saved. Drug addicts will be saved. Broken families will be put back together again. The people will be able to see, God, if you're able to do it for Lionel and Michelle, then you're also able to do it for me. God, I pray the power of your Holy Spirit upon their life in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. For you that are tuning in, God also has a plan for you. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing is thick. The Holy Spirit is moving. Oh, bless you, God. Thank you for second chances. Thank you for second chances, God. Thank you that you never give up on us. Thank you that you never throw us away. Thank you that you never turn your back on us. Thank you that you're more faithful to us than we are to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God. And we thank you for your grace. Those that need to be strengthened, strengthen them. Those that have given their life to the Lord, keep your hand upon them. And God, continue to take us according to your word from glory to glory and from strength to strength. That if you be before us, then who can be against us? Greater is you who live inside of us than he that is in this world. Father, in the name of Jesus, continue to do that great work in the lives of your people. Come on, one more time. Take some time to worship the Lord. And if you've given your life to the Lord tonight, and that was you, that God used this powerful couple to minister to you, and you responded, we want to get connected with you. Please reach out to us. Contact this WhatsApp number that's on the bottom of the screen, or reach out to our website. If you're a family member sitting in the room with somebody that gave their life to the Lord, let's get them connected, and let's help them in their journey with the Lord. Man, what a service tonight. Go ahead and give Jesus a good round of applause. Powerful job tonight. Thank you, guys. We love you guys. Praise the Lord. God has done a tremendous, tremendous thing tonight. Listen, this is what I want to do. 
I want to go ahead and rejoice a little bit. Is it okay to celebrate? We're going to celebrate tonight. Thank you for tuning in to our testimonial services here on Third Wave Thursdays. Next week is also going to be a powerful, powerful time. Don't miss out on what God is doing on Thursday nights. We're going to go ahead and sing a little bit. Then you can consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you. Let's go ahead and sing a song. Hey!